Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's been a little over a month since we did the last tank update on this 210 gallon reef tank. And to start off with, we had a power outage this morning. So I work night shifts right now. I do a rotating day, night thing. But anyways, I was sleeping and Ian woke me up at 6 a.m. this morning to tell me the power was out and to check on my tank. Turns out power was out for about three hours, but the tank itself was fine. But it is a constant reminder that you could lose power at any time on your tank and you need to have backups. Now, I have air bubblers on this tank, which kicked on, tank was fine, but it is time to replace those batteries. And I also have a generator in the garage. So I was in good shape, but in this video, you will see some corals that are a little stressed out from the power outage this morning. But hey, I'm not gonna not do the video because something bad happened and the coral aren't as healthy as they could be. They're gonna be fine. They're just slightly annoyed. Overall, the fish are doing really well. The only fish that's having a struggle in here is that yellow tang. That yellow tang is a captive bred yellow tang. He's from that very first group of yellow tangs that was sold in captivity. And because of some nutritional deficiencies when they were young, they all got HLLE. And this guy has got it pretty bad. And really, no matter how much I feed him, what I do, I just cannot get this guy to fatten up. And his fins continue to deteriorate and he's just slowly going downhill. And I guess it's to be expected from a fish with a severe case of HLLE. So it's sad to see it happen to this fish, but this fish is also a huge success because he is the first tank raised yellow tang. And I will do everything in my power to keep him happy and healthy for as long as I possibly can. As far as my lighting system goes, it's working out great. I've still got the three Kessel A360Xs, the two A160s on the mounts that allow me to adjust where the light's pointed, and then I've got the two metal halides. The metal halides I've updated to some old stock Aquamatic 20K bulbs, which so far I'm really happy with it. They're putting off a really nice blue. And then I've gone ahead and put vents in the hood and painted the hood black. This has really reduced the heat in here. I was having problems with my Kessels overheating, but now with the vents in the hood, they aren't. And I think I might even get away with shutting the fans off completely. With the last video I made, I was talking about having to fill my blue hole with a coral and I ended up putting one of my green Simularias in there and it's doing fantastic. It's opening up big, it's pulling out and up, which is pretty cool. So since the light's at an angle, the coral's growing out in an angle, it's actually working absolutely perfectly like this. The other thing that has happened is the pH controller for my calcium reactor stopped working. The power button quit working on it a couple of years ago, but I've been babying it along. And then I noticed my pH was showing 3.2 the other day, which is way too low for a calcium reactor. Now I'm at that time where it's time to replace probes, calibrate, and since I already had the broken button, I went ahead and ordered a new pH controller, probe, and calibration fluid, which will be here today. I probably could have got away with just the probe and the calibration fluid, but you know what? Rather than try to baby along broken equipment, I decided to do it right and just get a new controller. So that'll go on today when the part shows up. My monies continue to grow well. I'm still not getting the greens out of the Spangoda I'd like to see, but basically everything else is doing pretty well. Um, because of the alkalinity, I'm sure we're getting some stress there. So once we level that out, it should be much improved. My Atlantis Pink Tick Monipora is starting to overgrow my Space Invader Pectinia. Now, I'm expecting at some point the Space Invader Pectinia is going to get really upset with this Monipora 
throw some tentacles out there and kill it off. If it doesn't, I'll probably have to prune the Monipora back. But usually these Space Invader Pectinias are pretty tough coral that won't let too many things grow close to them. Much like we're seeing with this Palau Estrella, if you look at the base, there's a little bit of white right there. That's the Palau Estrella defending its territory from the Monipora. This is a perfect scenario. I've got a coral that's gonna grow up and tall that can defend itself from a spreader. So this should work out great. When I shot the last video, I had two scullies, one here, one there. I've moved them to over on the left side. They're kind of shaded by the hammers and frog spawns above them. And that's actually made a big difference. Right here ended up being too much light after I made my lighting changes. So now that they're moved back, they're doing much better. And then this has kind of opened up some nice space for some higher light corals. Even though we're at the bottom of the tank, I got a new Favia. There's supposed to be a branching Favia right here, but that fell off yesterday. So I'll glue it back on today. We've got crazy team Monipora. We got a nice little chalice down here on the bottom. And then we've got the Ulufilia, which I absolutely love. It's giant maze brain. Behind it, the Blasto and the Sephastria. And this is the latest Fabia. It's a really nice coral. It was very inexpensive. It's not super bright, but if you see that kind of yellow sticking out at the very top, yeah, that's enough color for me to say, you know what, I'm gonna buy this inexpensive coral and see what I can do with the color. If I can get a tricolor Fabia, that would be really cool. So a little change here has made a big difference to the way this rock looks. My latest Acanthophilia is doing really well. I've got him on the bottom of the tank, lower light. He's doing fantastic. This tank has a lot of those pesky photosynthetic flatworms in here. They get all over this Acanthophilia. It's super annoying, but it doesn't seem to bother the coral. It's just ugly to me, but the coral itself is doing great. If you didn't watch the Acanthophilia video, I highly recommend you do. I set up a photography tank for that video and got some pretty amazing shots. In my last video, I talked about some of the struggles I was having with these lower corals. With the lighting upgrades, they're doing really good. These frog spawns and hammers are grown almost to the glass now. They're filling out much better. These formerly gold hammers up here, I call them that because they're not gold anymore. They're still struggling a bit. Um, they fell off the rock the other day, so I glued them back up. They're just mad. Um, these guys have been much more sensitive than anything else in this tank, but I think we'll get them back to their former glory. My Zoa section is doing fantastic. It's a little interesting because where it's at, I'm getting the biggest, fattest heads on the utter chaos. They are absolutely huge. If you look right behind it, I've got a huge interstellar mushroom. We got those bounce vesicles coming out. And this thing's like two and a half inches across. He's massive. But I think it's all due to light and flow. If we go down and look at these utter chaos, you can see those long stems. That is directly related to the lower light and lower flow. Um, if there was higher light, higher flow, like in my Nano, they'd be much more pushed in with smaller heads. But here, they're pulled out and it looks pretty cool. I'm really starting to run into some space constraints here. You can see my toadstool, it's overlapping my clam, and then the big bubble, same kind of deal. It's all grown into each other. It's really cool, but I've got just these massive, huge pieces right together. I keep moving my clam so I can angle him more kind of this way. And just as he opens and closes, he moves himself back. So it kind of is what it is. Um, this guy is just massive. The devil's hand next to him is massive. So this whole section is just getting so huge. Now, as far as fragging goes, the leather's the only thing there I can really frag. So that's pretty much 
all I have in the way of a management tool. Speaking of big coral, my fox coral is getting huge, so I've kind of done the same thing with him. Moved him kind of at an angle, so he's got room to grow in each direction. Fortunately, this guy doesn't care as much about light as some corals, so he can kind of move backwards into the lower light. And he's got this section right here that's gonna be pretty good for him. So overall, he'll do really well right there. And here we are a few hours later. This is with the LEDs and the T5s on. And as you can see, it's just a really different look to the tank. Um, I love this about this style of lighting with the, let's call it hybrid lighting. I've got LEDs and T5s and metal halides. And I just get a different look to my tank all day long. And I just love it as things change, it's like, the day on the reef itself. You know, the morning you start off with a different lighting, then you have it high noon, then you have towards the evening, and it's just really cool. And this is something you just do not get without LEDs. So the LEDs, I totally understand why people love them, why they're the big thing, and I love them. They're fantastic. But, you know, I love the way that halide looks for part of the day. I'm running it for about four hours these days. I think that's where I'm gonna stick with it. And the results I'm getting are just fantastic. There's a couple corals in here that aren't quite as nice as I'd like them to be. But really, there's nothing in here that's unhealthy or not doing well. It's all just fantastic. Yeah, this is just exactly what I work for in a reef tank. All right, and it's here. I got the new Milwaukee pH controller. So I'll go put this thing on and that'll fix my alkalinity issues. And there's the new controller all installed, calibrated and ready to go. I really am glad I just bought a new one instead of fighting with old worn out equipment. And here's the tank once the T5s go out. It has a nice purple look to it, and I love this. So I accomplished this by turning the near violets up and the reds up. The reds really aren't gonna make a difference to the way the coral grow, but it really makes a difference in how the tank looks. And I love a purple tank. It just looks so beautiful. The fluorescence it gives off is just different and it looks amazing, I love it. Um, I haven't really seen any algae issues since I switched to the purple lighting, so that's working out really well. But it's just really cool because throughout the day I get a different look because of my lighting. And here's the tank as evening comes on. It's that purple look I absolutely love this. It's the near violets cranked up and a little bit of red mixed in just to make it look nice and purple. And I love this look. This is my favorite time to view this tank. It's nothing you'd see in nature, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And every night I feel like I'm getting a little treat. been shooting a lot of this episode handheld. That's because my tripod broke on me. Um, you can see I put a little hose connector on here, but yeah, that just doesn't tighten down anymore. So time for a new one, but you know, it's kind of fun to go and shoot handheld. You get a little different view of the tank. So other than a few little issues, the tank's really doing well. I'm happy with the lighting system. Coral growth has been pretty good. I'm hoping when we get alkalinity stabilized that we'll start getting a little better color out of some of those Montes. And really everything will just be a lot happier once that alkalinity is stabilized. So yeah, until next month, this is the update on the 210 gallon reef. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.